Hi, my name is Kazina. I work for Hastings Museum and Art Gallery, but I'm also a photographer. A lot of my photography I do when I'm out and about or when I'm traveling, but obviously that's not possible at the moment. So I thought about doing a few photography projects at home, which don't require any special equipment, no special camera equipment, no special lighting, um, and which all work with items I had around the house. And I would like to share these little projects with you in my mini workshop today. Today I'm looking at the reflective surfaces and how we can use them to for interesting effects in our photography. The camera I'm using is a smartphone camera, it's, an, it's just an iPhone. And what we do is ca can be done with absolutely any iPhone camera or smartphone camera. There's no special camera equipment needed, no special lighting. And I hope you enjoy this little workshop. I will also talk about some free photo editing software, which I find very useful. And I will tell you how to use it. It's um, very easy and I hope you enjoy this. Thank you very much. The photo editing app that I was mentioning earlier is called Snapseed. It's free to download for iPhones and for Android phones. And on the next slide, I'll show you some of the functions that I find really useful. On the left side, you can see the menu in Snapseed. The first option you have is Tune Image, which means you can change the brightness and saturation, for example, of an image. The next one is Details. Details allows you to change the sharpness of an image. Um, you also, further down, you have an adjustment brush, which allows you to change um, the lightness and darkness of certain areas in an image. Um, then you have got healing options, which means you can get rid of unwanted objects in, a, um, in, a, in an image. And one thing that I like to use quite a lot is um, the vignette option, which means you can make an image a little bit darker on the around the outside edges, which gives the image a nice sort of finished look and also um, allows you to um, enhance the focus of the center of the image. OK, so to go straight into our first project, um, you can see a setup that I made on the surface of my cooker. Um, I chose that surface because obviously, as you can see, it is a reflective surface. However, it is by no means perfect. It's got quite a lot of scratches, um, which are really obvious when you look down on the surface um, from high up. Um, and you can see that I used five small clay figurines that I had um, to, as the as the subject of my image, and then as a backdrop, I chose uh, a f an old flower painting that I got from a charity shop, which just allowed me to have a slightly nicer backdrop than uh, the things that usually sit around on my cooker. As you were able to see in the previous slide, there were quite a lot of scratches on the reflective surface that I'm using especially when you look down from eye height onto that surface. However, the interesting thing is if you bring the camera very, very close down to the surface, um, the, all the imperfections um, basically become fairly invisible and the reflective property of that surface enhances quite a lot. Now, on the left hand side, I've tried to demonstrate um, how I use the camera on the phone and in what position I use the camera on the phone. Normally, the way a camera is positioned on most um, smartphones, it's in the corner so that when you hold the camera, the camera is sort of in a top corner of your um, of your phone. Um, however, if you turn the phone basically upside down and bring the camera really, really close to the surface, what you get is a much enhanced reflectiveness and um, a much better image um, for this kind of project. So if you have a look on the image on the right hand side, you can see that the imperfections on the surface basically don't show any longer. And 
the reflectiveness is really, really crisp now. So after taking this photo, I wanted to refine it a little bit. Um, and for that, I use Snapseed. The first thing I did was I cropped the photo a little bit because I didn't like the edges of the painting in the background to show. And you will see the result in the next slide. So after cropping the image, I was very happy with the way the background looked, but I wanted to improve the saturation and the brightness of the image a little bit. So the next function I chose from Snapseed was a tune image. You can see that I slightly turned up the saturation and the brightness in this photo, which I think helps to make it a little bit more punchy. In order to make the image look a bit more finished, I have also added vignette in the next step. Using the vignette function in Snapseed gives the outer edge of the image a little bit of a darker tone. And you also have the option of um, bringing up the brightness in the center of the image a little bit, which really helps giving the whole photo a nice overall finished and quite strong look. So I think this image is looking really quite good. Um, it is now finished and just to recap, we used daylight, so no special lighting at all. We used a reflective surface that was in the house and some objects I had sitting around. Um, we, I used a smartphone camera, nothing special. Um, the only important thing was that the camera angle was really shallow, re really close to the reflective surface. Then we used Snapseed for editing for a crop, then enhanced the brightness and saturation. And right at the end, I added some vignette. Okay, so the second project is a little bit different. Um, I'm trying to achieve a slightly different look with the next one. Um, I'm using the same surface as before. Again, the surface of my cooker. And you can see in this setup photo that the surface is really anything but perfect. It's, it's actually quite scratched from this angle. You see it even better than in the previous project. Um, the other objects I'm using as um, one camping mug which has also a nice reflective surface, but is uh, has a sort of red lacquer on it. And then two shells I recently found on the beach and a silver ring, um, which is one of my old silver rings. And the background is the inside of a cardboard lid, which is basically from an old shoebox. Like in the last project, you can see that I brought the smartphone camera really close to the reflective surface again, which uh, resulted in the scratches pretty much becoming invisible. And also the reflection of the surface, the reflective properties to be much, much stronger than looking down on the surface from eye level. Um, so I'm quite happy with this shot as it is. But obviously there are a few things that need enhancing. One of them is um, it needs cropping because you can still see some of the cooker rings left and right. So that's the next step. OK, so I'm quite happy with the photo as it is now in terms of um, the cropping. Um, there are still a few things that could be enhanced. Um, one of them are these little bits of dust that you can see on the right hand side, especially these little white specks. They are basically just dust particles that I didn't clean off the cooker surface well enough before I took the photo. Um, it is quite easy to get rid of these in the Snapseed app. The best thing is to use the healing tool and um, you basically just point on, on those little um, specks with a healing brush and they will just disappear um, with one click of the button. 
So you can see that the little uh, dust particles have disappeared. I used the healing brush to get rid of them and it worked really well. I still think there are one or two things that could be improved in this image. In this image. Um, one of them is that I think the uniform lighting is a little bit boring. So again, like in the previous project, I will add the vignette to this photo to um, make the outer areas of the photo a little bit darker. Okay, so I've just um, used the vignette function to make the outer edge of the photo darker, which basically results in the background looking um, darker than before and the foreground looking brighter, which I think really um, adds to the images um, sort of drama a little bit, which I think makes it a much, much stronger image than before. Um, so I'm very happy with that. What I still think we could do with a little bit of tweaking is the actual um, temperature of the image, which means the balance between blue tones and yellow tones. I think it is a little bit too yellow. It's a little bit too warm. So I will use the temperature function in Snapseed to make it a tiny bit more blue. And I think then we're pretty much there. Okay, so I've just turned the temperature of the image um, a little bit more towards the blue spectrum, which means it appears slightly cooler than the previous version. And I think that really enhances the um, overall look of the image. Um, I really like that this image now has got a very sort of quite clean look. And I think it is um, an image that you could potentially find in places like a, like a fashion magazine or something like that, um, or a catalogue for jewellery. So I think it is quite interesting that you can turn everyday objects like a mug and a bit of a cardboard box and a cooker surface into something that looks actually like a studio setup. So I think we have quite a good image, um, a nice result really from a very, very simple setup with only items um, sort of that I found around my house. And to recap, we used uh, daylight, again, nothing fancy at all, um, used the reflective surface of my cooker. You can use any kind of reflective surface that you can find. It also doesn't always have to be a horizontal surface, it can be um, sort of a vertical one as well. Um, just do a bit of experimenting. Um, then important, we used a very shallow camera angle close to the reflective surface, which really gives you the best result. And again, I would say do a few experiments and try out what you can do with objects that you find around your house. Um, and then for editing, again, I use the Snapseed app. Um, I use the crop tool, then the healing tool to get rid of the little dust particles. Then I added some vignettes and right at the end, I tuned the color temperature a little bit more to the cooler spectrum to give it a slightly more crisp look. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and maybe you feel inspired to do a project or two of your own. If you have any images you'd like to share with us, that would be really cool. And you can do that in the comments below. Thank you very much. Goodbye.